Cocktail Delivering Happiness at South by Southwest. We're super excited to be joined by Tim Ferriss, author of a couple of great books. Very kind. <laughs> Very kind. Two books. Yeah. So awesome. So thank you so much for joining us. Can you just share a little bit about you know what you're what you're all about, what your day to day is? As Ooh, a, as Tim Ferriss's day to day. Well, I just finished the second book, so yeah. I had the Four Hour Work Week, which right. came out in 2007, which debuted really here at South by Southwest. So that was my first tipping point. So I owe right. a lot to South by. And then the Four Hour Body, which came out in December, right. most recently of, of 2010. So now that that book is done, it took three years to do. I'm in the lull before the next storm, and I haven't decided exactly what my next project is. Okay. I think what inspires me is the feedback I get from my readers at this point. And for a very long time, I wanted to be a professor. I thought I was going to be teaching in whether it was high school or a college scenario after, let's just say, 10 years in the business world. So after I had learned a number of lessons that I felt could be transmitted and taught to students, I would, I would go back to my roots in academia. And it turned out that the book and the blog were just much better leverage for teaching. I really enjoy learning and I enjoy teaching. And I think that I enjoy the teaching many times more than I enjoy the learning, which is a bit of an obsession of mine to begin with. So those are two things that drive me. A top of mind right now, two things. One would be literacy, help, helping spread literacy. So I'm going to be working with Room to Read, which is a fantastic nonprofit. O over the next uh, year or so, we're going to be building, uh, target is 100 schools or 100 libraries uh, in, de in developing countries in, in particular. I, I work with Donors Choose in the U.S. Second would be storytelling, really studying the art of storytelling. There's some, there are a number of books out uh, Tell to Win is one of them that's out right now, which is quite good. But I'm looking at screenplays and uh, script writing. So looking at the visual medium and how you can have the greatest impact through storytelling using that visual medium. So I'll be looking really closely at that over the next few months. The ubiquity of real-time communication is what strikes me as the biggest shift in the power dynamic over the last year, certainly. I just came back from Jordan in the Middle East, and so certainly looking at Tunisia, looking at Egypt, what happened in Egypt, uh, that was essentially fueled by Facebook, Twitter, and similar tools uh, that didn't weren't designed for that explicit purpose. Uh, so I feel that the ability to organize en masse with these very simple to use consumer tools in real time uh, will play a huge role in revolutions of various types. And I think uh, on a cautionary note, the, the easy part is, let's say, overthrowing a government. The hard part is then building a new government. Uh, I think medicine is where you'll see uh, many breakthroughs with collective intelligence through self-tracking. So this is no big surprise, but I've spent three years looking at this for the four-hour body. And I think that whether you look at a site like curetogether.com or patients like me, when you have millions of people with iPhones, once physical tracking becomes the default, meaning you don't have to choose whether you're going to track certain aspects of your body, it's done automatically. Uh, and when you can take, let's say, the data from 10,000 people and look at the patterns or have a program or AI look at the patterns, you will have breakthroughs that would have taken 10 years and millions and millions of dollars of funding from, let's say, the, the NIH. Uh, and you could accomplish that in the span of a day, two, less, which I think is really ins is exciting for me personally. The biggest failure, for, uh, the one that comes to mind would be in mid-2004, closest I've come to getting engaged, uh, saw that relationship disintegrate in front of my eyes because of my work schedule. From, I was working from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. And I was given a parting plaque, effectively, that said business hours end at 5 p.m. She said you should keep this on your desk as a as a reminder for your personal health, and she was right. And I, I, I think that that, uh, that I certainly view as a failure to prioritize properly. And also not realizing at the time that income really has no value without time. I would say that with any creative endeavor, whether that's a startup, certainly a book, it's, you're really signing up voluntarily for a, a manic depressive experience, and it's important that you realize that when you get started. Because if you expect it to be a consistent, oh, I'm going to kick out five to ten pages a day and it's, that's all I need to do is follow my process, you need to have a process, but you also need to recognize that there will be ups and downs. So if you have uh, a period of, let's say, a week where you just cannot, for whatever reason, spit out even a page of useful content, in the case of writing a book, uh, you should have a companion like Bird by Bird. It's a book by uh, Anne Lamott. 
which talks about the psychological trials and tribulations of writing to, so that you realize this is normal, so you don't freak out and then ex take what might have lasted five days and extend it to four weeks and then cancel your book contract and go into a big funk. It's not necessary. So realize when you sign up for any creative endeavor where there are a lot of factors that are unpredictable, where the, the course is going to change, that you're signing up for some pretty serious ups and downs. I would just say that hap happiness in, in many cases is a decision. So really, first thing in the morning, make, make a list of the things that you're grateful for. And that's a very good primer, a, a, a way to infuse a positive outlook starting from when you set foot out of your bed. So I would say that generally speaking and coming from someone who knows a lot of, has come to know some very, very wealthy people or people who have come into wealth very suddenly, hundreds of millions of dollars, it doesn't really make a difference. Uh, people are generally as happy or as miserable as they were beforehand, just amplified maybe 10% more so in either direction. So. Just decide that that's uh, that you're going to be grateful and focus on appreciation as much as achievement. And I think that's that's an important factor to keep in mind.